Now, <laughs> I wanted to look at a couple of his moves because I got to tell you, I got really, really excited in the offseason. I don't get very excited about Toronto Maple Leafs very often, to be frank. I have these players in I'm mind, sure. and I'm thinking they're just not going to pull the trigger. I remember when two seasons ago, Max Domi was available, and we don't go get him, even though he wants to come here. Then you got the big bad Bruins, and what do they do? They go off and trade for Tyler Bertuzzi, who I thought was a perfect fit. Me too. And, and now all of a sudden the offseason comes and Taylor Hall is off to the Blackhawks out of all things. So he's gone. Mm-hmm. And Bertuzzi does not return to Boston. He actually signed with the Leafs and they made it fit under the cap. Zach, these are the exact kind of players we need. I was channeling this. I know you were as well. Please rate these these transactions for us. And how did the Leafs pull this off? I could not be happier. I I have been waiting for a little bit of, I, what do they call it, snot, piss, and vinegar to be on this team for so long. You know, not that I'm coach of the year here, but I coached a couple championship teams, assistant coach, head coach, whatever you want to call it, okay? I was on the benches for a few different championship teams, and every single team had the same thing in common. It's not just an NHL formula, okay? Even when you're coaching... 10-year-old kids in single A or double A in the GTHL, you need to have snot. There needs to be, my little, my little brother, he says it all the time. He goes, we don't want players who want to win. That's not the type of player we want, okay? We want somebody who hates losing, okay? We want somebody who will piss and moan at the thought of losing. Forget about wanting to win. Wanting to win is great. It's the idea that losing just pisses you off. And those guys always come to play. They're in your face. They're up your you-know-what, trying to figure out where they can get the puck. Okay? Get me this puck. Put this puck towards the net. And, man, Bertuzzi, I love him. I thought when he – it was hilarious, too, when he took um, what's-his-face's stick in the in the round against uh, Florida. Like, he's just – He's another one who will be right up it. And the guy's got tons of skill, too. If he can stay healthy, he's going to be a big scoop for the Leafs. And I'm sure that that's where the one-year contract comes in. And Domi, Domi coming here is like a fairy tale story. I don't know how the hell it took this long. Because as far as depth players, depth players that the Leafs have signed over the last few years, he's for sure better than most of them at the same pay grade. So I don't know why it took him so long to get here. I'll tell you exactly why, Zach. Yeah. Because it came to the point when he just learned to shut up and play hockey. Part of the problem was that you knew Max Domi from his mouth and the interviews he gave and not his production on the ice. Once he got over his own hype and just focused on putting his game together and you stopped hearing his voice and started seeing his actions on the ice, that's when you started to want him. And I think the Leafs had to see that real because a big personality in a big city can be a recipe for disaster. That's why he was off in Dallas. That's why he was off to Chicago, kind of be in, in, in Carolina. He's a little safer over there in Toronto because of the last name that he sports on his jersey. I mean, his dad, I mean, come on, besides the fact that he was well-loved in the city as a hockey player, he's the biggest social climber known to man. This guy is in every inner circle known possible. You see pictures of him with, with David Beckham in Muskoka, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and the, I mean... He dated uh, Belinda Stronach for the longest time. This is the act that Max has to follow. And the problem is is that people want to talk about his dad as much as they want to talk about him. Now, when they're kind of over his dad for a while and he's not voicing his opinion so much and he's just going and putting a grinding game. Like to me, he's the kind of guy who's going to give like hits, 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 and he's going to score you probably at least 20 goals. Like that's where I see a good Max Domi at. Bertuzzi with the line mates he's going to have, if he's semi-healthy, should get at least 25 goals. I love these these two moves. And this is exactly what we need to put together. And I was so jealous of Boston when they got Bertuzzi. I gave us a 0% chance. I thought there was no chance in hell he's going to come here. I was sure he's going to come to Boston. But funny, in Boston, losing the way they did in the playoffs, you know, the allure went off really quickly. They went from being the most magical team that's going to – they might as well hand them the, the Stanley Cup now – to this is a disaster. It's an old team. It's funny how they turned overnight. It's true. And then Bergeron retires. And now you just got a bad taste in your mouth. So I'm I'm with you. I think Boston's on the decline. I think Bertuzzi saw that. And as far as you know, top teams in the NHL goes, 
the Leafs are still up there. They they still they have to be up there. And for whatever reason, they always lose to the team that ends up going to the Stanley Cup final. So it's great moves. Bertuzzi, he's going to put up 90 points this year. He's, he's going to have an unreal year. And what he's going to do, which I'm most happy about, is he is going to be up Mitch Marner's butt. Because at the end of the day, like to me, Bertuzzi is playing first line. That's just the way it is. Matthew Nyes is not going to be playing first line anymore you got Bertuzzi up there with Matthews and Marner it's your certified first line stay healthy and that should be the line you play 82 games with post or in the preseason and roll with into the playoffs and he's going to open the ice up for Marner he's going to be up Marner's you know what and he's going to plant his butt in front of the net and just let Matthews and Marner wire pucks so I'm I could not be happier and Domi up and down the lineup the guy's a chameleon he can play anywhere his game and style of play, his skill set, he'll be good first line, third, first line, second line, third line, fourth line. Though I don't want him on the first line because, like I said, Bertuzzi. But um, don't you, you think? never know. You never know. Depends on how they play. People are injured. Blah blah blah. It could happen. Uh, I'm very excited about the season. Like even Samsonov. Remember, Samsonov. Right up until December was one A one B with Matt Murray. There was no guarantees of who was going to be the number one until Murray kind of faded there, and you know we won't go get into that, mm-hmm. but. Uh, he comes into camp knowing he's the number one guy and wall played really well. And I think this is a case where you can have, I think they're going to split it uh 60, you know, kind of go 65, 35% split, you know, mm-hmm. for every two that Samson off plays wall plays one. I think they need to keep Samson off fresh. This mm-hmm. is not, you cannot have it out there 70 games, but mm, no. um, you know what? Uh, I'm excited. Uh, one that I did read about though recently Gotta ask you. Come opening season, our old friend Jack Campbell. You think he's gonna be in the Oilers uh, system? Is he gonna be still wearing an Oilers uniform, or you think they're gonna trade him for another bad contract? Where do you see going with Campbell? He's a hard one, right? Because who's gonna take his contract? He he. It's after be bad last contract year, for bad contract. That's how I see it. Okay, but what kind of bad contract? The only bad contracts you're gonna take now are just gonna be high cap, right? High cap, too much term, which is exactly what he has. I don't. I'd like to see who would even take him on. And, you know, for that, you're going to have to pay a boatload. Like you're talking multiple high round picks to get rid of, you know, what's left of a five and change by four, right? That's that's a big boatload. I'm sure they're trying to get rid of him because there really isn't much of a reason to keep him at this point. Um, but the, the Oilers, the Oilers to me, they're, they're a weird situation because – they could be a really, really good team. And, you know, the at home move and everything last year really kind of gave them that extra push, but it fizzled out again. And I, I just, I don't know. I had an Edmonton Toronto final. Are they that different than the Penguins when it comes down to it? I mean, not having the depth, goaltending being, eh, you know, two major stars. I, I, I think they're all kind of in the same boat here, you know, and that's where, you know, Vegas, yeah. think how much depth Vegas has, you know, and they got everybody yeah. back for the playoffs. Tampa had the same thing. It's it's all about depth, but uh, where depth doesn't seem to matter and people don't seem to care is in the goalie position because, you know, Linus Allmark was absolutely stellar. Then he falls apart. Bobrovsky wakes up all of a sudden, then he falls apart in the finals. And, Correct me if I'm wrong. Is Connor Hellebuck not still a Winnipeg Jet? Yeah, no. That 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 to me is going to be a big one. What's I he doing? What's gonna... he doing in Winnipeg still? Can he find his way out of town? Like, what's going on I, there? I think they're waiting. I don't think there's a rush. Rush, and I think they're going to get an absolute fortune, like a king's ransom for him. I feel like NHL. I think that NHL teams, Zach, they don't value the goalie position as much as they used to. Like, we don't have a Martin Brodeur per se. You know, no. you have. You, have, you know, you have a couple of great guys, obviously, in Tampa and Allmark, et cetera. But reality is a lot of these goaltenders are just these middling guys. And you know what? They're all in about the same stats. And nobody's that, you know, caring about it. They're not going to waste their salary cap on a goaltender. And they're like, you know what? I'll just bring up a young guy to be my backup and keep a veteran guy going. And this is, seems to be consistent across the league. Like, the goaltending position has really evolved over the years. I think, I think the goaltending position has evolved. I think it's become like the goaltending job has become so much harder. But, you know, I was having this discussion with my buddy the other day because, like, you know, teams with moderately good goaltending have been winning one-offs. Avalanche, you know, Vegas did too, I'm sorry, but Aiden Hill is not, you know, 
Andre Vasilevsky. And the one thing he said to me that kind of sit it, sat in with me, and I, I could see where he was going was, you don't necessarily need the best goaltending to win a Stanley Cup anymore in the NHL, but you need the best goaltending to be in the fight every year to create that dynasty. Like, you know, Tampa Bay, it's the first time they've been out of the first round in, what, seven years? Vasilevsky's a, st- a stunner, right? When Pittsburgh was in the run every year, Marc-Andre Fleury was a stunner, right? You have yeah, you have to have that, that extra Boston. Tuka Rask, another team. Boston's always been in the play, in the hunt, and they had to grasp for years and years and years. So I think when you have that kind of caliber goalie, you'll always be in the fight and you'll always have a chance to win. But, you know, like the Avalanche last year, what did they do, right? Um, so I think I think it's interesting. Vegas, what they, didn't they miss the playoffs the year before last? Yeah, but so. then but they still kept themselves rolling, you know, and they keep finding a way. And it's funny because, you know, they end up with goalie, goaltender number four and still right. find a way to win the Stanley Cup where every other team would would implode with goalie number three, which I got to ask you, have we seen the last of Robin Leonard? Is he going to be golfing indefinitely with Matt Murray or rebuilding a snake farm? Where do you think, what do you think is going to be happening with Robin Leonard? Like, I don't think he was good enough to come back, if I'm being completely honest. You know, like the headaches that he's caused. It, it, it's hard to say no because of Evander Kane. Right, like when Evander Kane came back, I mean, no one saw it coming. He was a good hockey player. Don't get Dan me wrong. Dan Milstein did. Yeah, Dan Milstein. Uh, that's right. Dan Milstein did. But Robin Leonard, uh, you want if, if you're not represented by him, call up Dan Milstein. There's uh, one man. Gold Star Hockey, and uh, he will find a way for you. Robin Leonard is one of those guys. You know, they say like a million dollar talent and a ten cent brain, and that's where it kind of. I feel like that Max Domi comment I made, where sometimes you just gotta shut up and play. You know. Don't worry about snake farms and all this stuff. Just go and worry about hockey and that's it. And just focus on hockey. And I feel like when you have a lot of distractions off the ice, especially from a personal standpoint, in the goalie position, it's all mental. So you got 10 million thoughts up there. The last thing you're thinking about is stopping pucks. So, and he's talked about his mental health issues before on another note. So if I'm a betting man right now, I don't see him playing another game, but I could be wrong it's i'm with you that's my initial thought the only like underlying like little thing that got me is the fact that i think he just claimed bankruptcy in three different states or whatever it was um so you know he's gonna have 10 million thoughts and the first 10 million of them are gonna be how am i putting food on the table um so he, he may have no choice but to start playing hockey again and keep his mouth shut and you know obviously there's a factor of his mental health which you can't dispute it is what it is up there and fortunately and he needs the help that he the or whatever help he needs but um he may have no choice we'll see who knows if you're the maple leafs and and robin laner gets released and yep. he's 100 percent healthy he's bas- past the bankruptcies everything's good from a legal standpoint and he's 100 percent healthy and he's more motivated than ever do you take a chance on him sign him for the minimum or you pass Sign him for the minimum, maybe, but for a guy who's publicly open about his mental health struggles, which, you know, there's no shame in that. The majority of people in this world have mental health struggles, but I don't know if the majority of people in the world with mental health struggles will try and sign up in the biggest pressure cooker there is in hockey. So, And and this is funny because he does struggle, but on the other hand, he keeps asking for the microphone and then keeps blabbering to the reporters. So. It's one of those things I'd have in the contract. As long as you can kind of keep your interviews down to 30 seconds or less, we'd be good to go. But with his talent, I mean, think about it. Vegas gave up Flurry to keep him around. Like That to me just didn't make sense. I still don't think he's better than Flurry, but who knows? I, I, he was a guy that at the time, remember the Leafs did acquire him for three seconds and then flipped him, right? Yeah. yeah. But I think he would have been a great number three goalie at the time. But uh, say la vie. 